on my friends and welcome back to the shop. Today we are broadcasting from Frank's Gun Shop in Amsterdam, New York. Fantastic shop. If you don't know it, get familiar with it. They got a lot of cool stuff in their shop and I'm going to show you two handguns the market is asleep on right now. I'm telling you right now, I've got the Stoker STR9 and the Stoker STR9S, two very cool guns. I want to show you some of its features, some of their features, some of their features because it's two guns on the bench today and I can't even get it straight. Let's get down on the bench and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we are down on the bench with a Stoger STR9 and the Stoger STR9S Combat. So, what I, let me get one of these other lights in here. Uh, down on the bench, we have these two. So normally, uh, we, uh, up here, Frozen Tundra, uh, uh, up here in New York, we are limited to a magazine capacity of ten, um, and it, these do these ship with these ship with one magazine. Uh, magazines for these, I believe, are readily available right now. Canic owners uh, are kind of suffering because there's there's just no mags out there. Some uh, some other gun manufacturers I know are having trouble with mags right now. Stoker's not one of them. Um, and we've got the uh, STR9S Combat, which features a set of suppressor height sights, a fully adjustable rear sight, a magazine well, and a mag base pad. I uh, believe this one actually ships with two with two mags, uh, and we can get more and we can get more base pads uh, for this off of Stoker's website. Um, and a uh, with a threaded barrel is, uh, with a threaded barrel attachment is really pretty cool. Uh, and it features a it features a different um, a different flat face style trigger um, that's uh, kind of different than the STR9 because the STR9 has got this uh, it's got a rounded trigger and this has a flat face trigger on it. Both of them feature that sort of sprung um, that sprung trigger safety on the inside of it that we're really familiar with now. We are very. That, that's sort of just an overview of all the of, of the features of all these, um, uh, and, uh, and I believe we have interchangeable back straps too, uh, which is sort of a uh, in a Smith style. They kind of uh, cl their clamshell clamshell onto the back, and then they they come off the back. But very heavy, uh, very heavy rear grip stippling, which actually isn't sharp. Um, it's just that the gap in between in between this checkering on the back here is so nice and wide that um, you can you can really get a nice grip on it without it feeling abrasive against your skin which I like for little for little soft hands like mine but um, the thing is is that uh, everybody thinks that we're, we're thinking of Stoger we're thinking of Stoger here uh, as, a, as a shotgun company and it's a lot uh, really it's hard I think it's hard for a lot of people to get their heads around the fact that they're making handguns and not only are they making handguns but they're making really good handguns so what is happening here with this is that um, now that the patents, the patents for the Glock product are old enough um, that everybody's sort of picking up this the the original Glock polymer, the original Glock polymer frame, and then they're ha they're giving their own interpretation on that idea. Stoger has done this because for me, I don't shoot Glocks very I don't shoot Glocks very well. I have a big problem with Glocks as the um, as the, the 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 grip angle doesn't really agree. With with me and I usually tend to get bit in the back because there just isn't enough beaver tail to keep <laughs> to keep my hands from just getting destroyed this STR is not really doesn't I don't have that problem I don't think that I, I don't feel like I'm gonna have that problem under recoil this feels like it's just going like it like we're like we're not gonna have an issue there I really like that I like the ergo of this because what we have is we've got we've got some finger grooves here they're small they're not too big if your hands don't line up with these just right just perfect you're not gonna be too upset I don't think you're not gonna be too upset about it but then again if your hands don't line up with it just right you're probably not gonna buy the gun usually you know if I if I was making this thing would I put finger would I put finger grooves on the front of this no i would just do a nice big undercut under here and leave it at that what i do like about this is that there is a massive undercut in front of that trigger and i think that that right i'm sorry just behind that trigger i think that's super cool this brings the hole gets as much meat as close to the bore as possible and brings the bore axis down into your hand and makes this a better shooter um, overall with the trigger feel here 
trigger really does feel uh, feels just fine. Um, feels very uh, not too di not too dissimilar from the large manufacturer that this thing is directly copied off of. Um, so uh, anybody that's shooting this is gonna is gonna find that very familiar. What I do think is really cool. I'd like to make a note that these these cocking serrations. I would like I would like a lot. A, a lot of manufacturers to copy these because they're the margins in between of the in between these serrations is very wide the edges on this are sharp but they are broke these are chamfered edges but it makes it so that when you put your fingers in there you don't need a whole lot of grip to pull to actually pull that thing back and we do have kind of a stiff recoil spring in here which i think is going to overall make it a really 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 soft shooter um, those are some of the things that I think are really cool about this and obviously this thing's gonna come apart a very in a very familiar way we just pull a little bit of uh, pull the slide back just a little bit release that release the trunnion spring and then this whole thing comes forward and that whole this, everything comes off um, looking down on the bottom of this we've got some nice uh, nicely machined pieces. This barrel looks like it's in really good shape. One thing that I feel like is always indicative of a, a, a huge card that tells the quality is <laughs> is recoil spring guide rods. Uh, believe it or not, I just think that right here is a really easy place um, is a really easy place for somebody to just cheap out on. Um, and if we sort of like get a load of this, like just take a look at this. Um, if we just take a look at this this guide rod face, um, you can see that this has come off of a lathe, and that this is a this is a 100% uh, milled, uh, a very nicely machined, uh, nicely machined part. Um, it's got a uh, it's got a flat spring. It's got a flat spring wrapped around it, and um, it's and like I said, it's just it's just nicely made. Lots of times you don't need to make these things. You don't need to overbuild these. You overbuild these because you want you want a, you want a gun that you can put a lot of miles on, but that's not going to need service. I always keep that in mind because anytime I see a sort of a polymer plastic nylon uh, guide rod uh, guide rod for guide rod spring, man, I just kind of cringe at that because it's just. Um, to me, it's just not cool. It makes everything kind of have a chunky, it makes the whole gun have like a really chunky feel. When you do rack it, when you do pull it back, it feels, it just doesn't feel great. Uh, moving on to this barrel. Uh, nice, it, it seems like we've got, it seems like we've got uh, some nice machining here. Uh, it seems like we're gonna have a solid lockup. Like I said, all these edges, uh, all these edges are all broke. These edges are all broken. Uh, nice, a, uh, uh, um, a nice uh, a nice crown a recessed crown in the inside of here and then a, a round over on the top and it seems like we've got a plenty uh a plenty robust a plenty robust chamber in here for all of our uh, uh so that we're going to be rated i'm sure that uh, it does not it does not say plus p on there i'm gonna have to check that out if you know if they're plus p rated in the comments i thought that they were um but now right now i'm hesitant i'm not really too sure why um I know I looked it up too, and I just can't. I just can't quite remember. But when we look down, <clears throat> when we're looking down on the inside of the frame and down at the inside of the fire control, we're gonna see right off the bat here. We're gonna see a lot of very, very, very familiar. Those the the Glock crowd is gonna see a lot of very familiar uh, technology uh, down on the inside on on the inside of here. Um, you know, pound for pound, we're pretty much looking at a very similar engineered. Uh, and very similar to, qual to the same quality delivered as a Glock, as a Glock product, um, and I think that that's that's just very. I think that that's really interesting. And I'm wondering, sort of like, what's the holdup, right? Because we don't really see these flying off the shelves. I don't see a whole lot of information. A whole lot of other YouTubers out there that are that are reviewing these, that are checking these out. We're starting to see a little bit of it come out, but I just feel like the market's just asleep here because we do have a quality product. And I don't know, maybe it's just these finger grooves. Maybe they think that Stoker's uh, Stoker's really a shotgun company. I don't know. And this thing, let's talk about this for a second because we got a really cool. We've got a a, a, a great magazine, uh, great magazine base pad. Uh, we've got, and it comes in a ten round. Right for uh, for capacity uh, for capacity uh, restricted states, this is super cool because guess what we're doing? Changing magazines a lot, right? So 
having a nice having a nice base pad on here, having a nice uh, mag uh, mag extension, I think it's just super cool. Um, having suppressor height sights for us, it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, I still think I still think it's pretty cool. We've got a, a fully adjustable rear sight. Um, nice uh nice fiber optic colors in there so we get a really we, we're getting a really good sight picture now a bunch of people i saw were complaining about we're playing we're complaining about these screws right so they're they're saying oh well, what are we using flatheads for um these are uh you know this is this is 20 2022 what are we still using flatheaded screws for uh to me it doesn't really matter to me right we've got we the the efficacy of the the efficacy of the fastener is not is is not um is not dictated by the style by the style of a fixation that's used right so um it's it's it doesn't matter i mean it's it's holding the plate on if it holds a plate on and it works you got flathead screws on the uh, uh, for sight adjustment for height and uh, for height adjustment i don't know to me, this is a not. This is just a way to complain. This is a way for gun snobs to complain about something that they don't like because they want it. For some reason, they want this to be an Allen key. Um, I, I just, I don't, I don't care. Doesn't matter to me. Uh, front facing trigger, or I'm sorry, flat face, flat face, yeah, front facing trigger. I would certainly hope so. Flat facing trigger, pretty nice. Breaks right there at the 90. Uh, breaks right there at the 90. A little bit of take up right off the top, but nothing that anybody who doesn't. You know anybody who uh, anybody who shoots a striker gun is going to feel very familiar, uh, very familiar with a break there. Uh, yeah, uh, this is not this is not going to come as a surprise. Uh, the trigger uh, trigger feels almost it, it, that that style of trigger is almost industry standard at this point, and I, I, you you can almost just say that yeah, this is just an industry standard uh, trigger weight. But again, the serrations on this are just really are just really excellent. I want to talk about something that really bothers me now uh something that really bugs me is that this this white this uh this white inlay on this slide is garbage um this really bugs me because i'm pretty sure i could take an a, a rag with some acetone on it and like totally mess this up and if i rub on this just a little bit it kind of smears it's a little hard i'm trying to pick this up in the right light in the light here um but yeah it kind of smears across that um and i'm like for what why can't we figure that one i kind of got it there just a little bit it's it's pretty apparent here um but yeah we've got like a this sort of like smearing smearing thing that's happening and i'm like that's your logo man i don't to me if I was gonna find, if I was gonna have a complaint, that was that's gonna be it. You know, I'm like, uh, fit and finish, fit and finish should be pretty. It should be high enough that you can't rub, that you can't, you know, smear the logo with your fingers. But guys, I, uh, there's something I always want to talk about, um, and that is a lot of people. A lot of people will talk about things like these screws, and are gonna talk about talk about features on this gun, and talk about things that. Um, things that aren't acceptable to them and I just want to say and we forget this all the time uh, as shooters and in the firearm industry we forget this all the time um, that everybody every single person has a different definition of what is acceptable and they have a different definition of what's acceptable and then when we talk when we throw money we put a price tag on it and we put that into the equation stuff gets wacky really 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 weird um and it, it, and you just you see that when you talk to people about uh, about firearms that are like this um where it's like okay well that thing's really just a, that's really just a copy of a glock product why wouldn't you just buy that um and that's a valid question why wouldn't you just buy that but we can see serial numbers here on the bottom so serial number uh, uh serial numbers are are where are where we would find them on a glock product as well um but like i said we've got a much to me this big undercut underneath here gives us just just puts this thing so much further down in my hand and just gives just allows me to really really choke up on it without without getting bit there's enough beaver tail back there and just this big this big undercut i i gotta say the grip it it's ugly right to me this is to me right everybody has a different definition of what's acceptable to me this is very this is really ugly i don't like it 
But God, I'm telling you, uh, for a man with for a man with very average sized hands, uh, <laughs> for a man with si- average sized hands, uh, this is a uh, this is definitely this is something that um, this is something that just feels really good to me. Um, you know, and, I, and like I said, a nice a nice magazine well and a nice uh, nice ba- base pad extension. Okay, guys. So that is an overview on these two uh, two shotguns. Oh, I'm sorry. These two nine millimeter handguns, uh, the Stoger STR9 and the Stoger STR9 S Combat. Uh, two two guns. Like I said, I think the market is completely asleep at the wheel here because we've got we've got Stoger coming in at, at such an affordable price point with this on a essentially internally a platform that we're all very familiar with. Um, I think that these things are just. I think that these things are punching way above their weight and just nobody's really looking at them. And I think one of the big holdups to this, and I, I mean, you can see this, the, the question answered in the title, but one, one thing I think nobody is talking about here is that you can get holsters for this. A bunch of the bunch of people are like, oh, I can't get holsters for that. Dude, I Googled it. It took 10 seconds. I'm telling you right now, there's a bunch of guys that are out there that are making that are that that are making pretty much any holster that you can throw at this thing, and they're doing that because they they see that this is gonna have that this is a product that's gonna have leg that's gonna have legs, that there's gonna be a legacy here. Um uh, like I said, you can stag a holster for it. Guys, if you like the video, like the video. Uh, I need uh, I need all the help I can get. If you think that this STR, that that that's that this STR is cooler than you thought it was when you first started watching this video, uh, uh, subscribe or drop a like or drop a comment and let me know because I think that these things are just super cool. And like I said, I think they're punching way above their weight, way above their weight for what they are. Guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. If you like the video, like the video, and I will catch you in the next one.